for over 16 years. Uh, during that time, uh, Edge had gone from strength to strength, and it's now the uh, by far the largest sort of GIS and sort of mapping company in the world. Uh, I mean, Edge's investment in research and development uh, is second to none, and the good thing is we're all, all able to benefit from the products that they produce. So what we've got is two sessions now. We've got the first being introduced by Rod Peel. He's our Edgery Partnership Manager. And Rod will explain the significance of GIS and mapping and how you're already using them in your everyday work. Um, Carmel will then show you the new ArcGIS Professional, uh, which is due out later on this year. Then we'll break for tea and coffee. Uh, and then Carmel will show you the new uh, ArcGIS Online. So I'd now like to hand you over to Rod Peel. Thank you, Colin. Good, so thanks very much, Colin. I'm from Esri UK. I've been with Esri UK about two years. And before that, I worked for Esri Inc. in America for about 11 years. So I, I know the GIS environment pretty well. And uh, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk to you today about GIS. So the theme of today's conference is innovation. It could be defined as a, a new idea or process. Really, is there a better way? Is there a better way of doing something? So as, as we have our meeting today, I'd like you to try and think about that. When you go to your day jobs tomorrow, is there a better way of serving out that map that you've always made can you do it differently and make a greater impact with it? So I get inspired by organisations, customers who embed GIS into their mission critical workflows. Like say utility, when the first map there is using GIS to understand where to stage up power as a new housing development goes in, or in the lower map, perhaps integrating with a system like SAP, trying to understand which residents might be affected by a power outage, displaying a video of the power outage uh, next to the map. And in Jersey yesterday, we, we learned more about the Jersey Utilities map. Uh, John touched on this this morning. You know, can we dig a smaller hole when we dig up the road? And can we just dig up that road once and not once every three months? So trying to get different utility companies to collaborate using a map. And that's just a classic use of GIS. So really, you know, I think what I'm trying to say is, is that maps are vital. Any organisation you go into today, you can find a map pretty much anywhere doing something. They've really become part of our everyday life. But there are challenges. There are challenges we face trying to get the authoritative information into the right hands of the people who make the decisions. And this is really uh, becoming so important today with the relentless pace of technological change. I'd like to dwell on this for a few minutes. Technology is evolving at a, at a rapid rate, especially how we engage with it. And I'm sort of going to define this in three ways, I think. The first one is big data. And the second one is consumerism. And the third one is the Internet of Things, or this evolution of smart technology. Who here has heard of the Internet of Things? Is that a phrase that's familiar with someone? Okay, great. So, so let's talk about that. So big data. So my analogy to try and get you to think about big data this morning is Amazon. So who here uses Amazon to ship presents to people? So yeah, quite a lot of you. So personally for me, 10 years ago, I would use Amazon, you know, I'd buy a book or so. But now it's become so sophisticated, it's giving, sending me emails and predicting, well, I'm going to buy this Christmas based on what I bought last Christmas. I use Amazon to manage my address list. If, I, if I've forgotten someone's address, I'll just go to my Amazon account and pretty much it's probably there. Uh, they and other companies like eBay have become enormously successful analyzing these vast amounts of data and building in predictive behaviors. They've hired a lot of data scientists. They've built very complex algorithms and they're harvesting all this information about us. eBay will now do predictive analysis as well, suggesting items we might be interested in bidding on based on our, on our auction history. And uh, my last example here is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn has 300 million members now. I'm on LinkedIn, probably most of you are. But most of those members don't actually pay them any revenue. They make their money from a small subset of users, and those are the recruiters 
and employers who go onto LinkedIn to try and you know, find new candidates and staff for their organisations. So what's this got to do with mapping, you might be asking yourselves. Well, if you, if you add a location component to that big data analysis, you can see how powerful GIS can become. So thinking about consumerism here, this is a picture from a Southern California Police Department, about four years old now. They were hiring a lot of young police officers, guys in their 20s, who were coming to work with their phones and tablet computers and asking, you know, can I use this at work? I use it at home. I want to be able to you know, see my crimes on the, on the device. I want to be able to get out of my patrol car, walk around the streets, talk to citizens and you know, understand patterns of burglary. So the sheer amount, the sheer demand of this really influenced the IT department to uh, integrate, uh, integrate their IT systems with these uh, devices, with personal devices. And the Gartner Group talks about this, this, uh, this term consumerization of IT. So that's the expectations that users have that what they do at home, they should be able to do at work, and it needs to be easy. So moving on here, let's just look at a very quick video before I talk about this one. This is real-time measurement we're thinking about, and the, the sort of notion of where am I right now? So if I just kick off this short video, as a case may be. Oh, it's not good. Thank you, PowerPoint. Meet the challenges. Let's just worry about that in a minute. So here's the video. So this is Fuel Saviour. Uh, two developers actually won a competition from Esri UK. And uh, the scenario is you're a trucker, you're driving down the motorway, you've got your phone you know, sitting on the dashboard, and uh, you want to understand where the best rest stop is based on some criteria that you're going to put into the application. So in a moment you'll see the driver put in the postcode, he's got 192 miles to go in his, in his route, he wants a place where he can park his big, his big lorry, his HGV facility. So first he's typing in the postcode, like so, and then he's ticking, yeah I want to park my lorry. I want to have a rest stop, I want to get something to eat, hits go, and then using GeoTriggers, which is an application that is part of the RGS platform, the red dot shows the location of the lorry, obviously that's changing all the time, the purple dots are alternative locations, and the red dot with the halo there on the bottom right is his final destination, which is going to appear just, just about there, and the concept is, it's as the location changes, the driver gets presented with different information, alternative routes, uh, text messages, to really help him on his journey. So here we are, some, some alternative routes. You might want to stop, for, stop off at Brian Nunn's Haulage Limited. Uh, it's showing his, his uh, Morrison's, his final destination is 36 kilometres away. Uh, he gives him the option to just hit a button and call them. Does he want to call them at that moment? The concept I'm trying to promote you is, is that the information on the phone is based on his location at that particular time. So obviously it changes. Doesn't have to run all the time, can run in the background there. And lastly, should get a text message. You are approaching Morrison's Ipswich. And that pretty much is it. So let me just try and get a PowerPoint again. So, other applications for this, I mean, really the applications are, be careful, may contain viruses. Okay. Other applications are, if you're a public safety agency, you might be an ambulance, the crew would enter into, you know, a, a smart device, what kind of injury it is, a text message would go to the hospital when the ambulance is 10 minutes away, say, you know, let's get a trauma team ready, there's a particular kind of injury, you know, about to arrive. Uh, we've got the marketing example there that was in the screenshot. Uh, you know, I could be walking down the street, could get a text message saying, you know, the shoes that you bought last week are on offer again, 50% off, do you want a second pair? You know, that kind of thing. 
in Oxford Street, it's quite interesting now, the phone companies aren't, aren't really making money from voice calls anymore, they're making money from value-added services. So in Oxford Street, they'll buy, the, the retailers will buy data, phone data, which is the language that the tourists are using on their phones, so they can tell how many foreign tourists are going into particular stores, and then they'll construct the shelves and the special offers, perhaps with foreign language messages, based on that information, because certain nationalities will go to certain stores. So that's another you know, fascinating application for this real-time technology. So this is a slide from a Microsoft conference I attended to uh, recently. Microsoft are a strategic alliance partner of Esri's, and they've come up with some interesting statistics here based on some research. Last year we spent more time watching media on our devices than on televisions. No surprises there. But on the bottom left, uh, we spend two-thirds of our time away from our desk. So personally for me, I'll use a tablet, a phone and a computer all in, all in the same day, but in different places. You know, if I'm in a meeting room, I'll be using my tablet. If I'm in the car, I'll be using my phone. And obviously at my desk, I'll be using my computer. And... Uh, also interestingly, 20% of bring your own device programs failed in the enterprise. So clearly there's some challenges there if you want to encompass personal devices into your enterprise IT strategy. Uh, this is this month's Harvard Business Review, who talk about digital ubiquity. So next year there'll be an explosion in digital devices. We'll see wearable t-shirts that record our blood pressure, our location, our pulse rate. All of that is uploaded to the cloud and add to our, our personal phone so we can look at it and monitor our, our fitness levels or exhaustion levels. So uh, if you think about mapping and trying to bring this context into mapping, this is, this is where we are today. Everyone's using maps, but the effect of them using different maps and not the authoritative information is that it, I think, makes for poor decision making. So if you imagine here you've got uh, you know, the commercially available map here, you can pull off the internet, on the internet, use it on the internet, and uh, the standard authoritative data for the island, just imagine trying to work on a project, but you're using different base maps. You know, it makes for suboptimal decision making if you're not integrated. And without integration, this is really the result. And when we survey our customers, this is what they want. They want one corporate system, uh, information to be available three clicks or less, it needs to be easy to use, and above all, it needs to be consistent. They want uniformity in their maps. So uh, what we want to do is help you, empower you to discover, use and make and share those maps once, but on many devices. So you create your map once and share it out to multiple devices, anytime, any place. And we call this Maps at Work. So it's, it's bringing together all these things that we've talked about this morning. Uh, UAVs, phones, social media, images and video, uh, integrating with business systems like SAP, we saw that in the earlier slide, spreadsheets and web services. And here are some examples. This is a very common example of GIS. Here we have a water utility managing their assets with GIS. And this is all about the authoritative information, getting that into the, into the hands of the people that need it. And here's a comparative analysis. So if you look before the hurricane, before Hurricane Sandy, we've got the big white building here, and there's after, and you can flick between the two, and very rapidly get a sense of the damage caused by the, the event. Here is crime, so with crimes, I mean John touched on this earlier, if you imagine 10,000 dots on the map, it's hard to make sense of it. But then if you analyse those dots based on, you know, red for more violent, blue for less violent, and then put in a time slider, you can start to get a sense of where the most dangerous places are at a particular time of day in uh, San Francisco, which is where this is from. And here's an example, Operations Dashboard, which Carmel's going to show you after coffee. Here we're integrating real-time measurement. Uh, traditional GIS analysis, creating a vulnerability service, surface, rather. So we're adding in different factors, you know, hazmat routes, hazmat facilities, traffic, flooding areas. We're assigning them a value, and we're pushing out a color. Red's more vulnerable, green is safe. So an emergency manager could use this to understand if there's going to be more heavy rain, where might be the likely locations for landslides. 
Here's ArcGIS Online, we're going to see more about this later, where we can put the authoritative content in a browser environment and via a login you can get access to the most popular maps, the most useful maps for your particular need. So about seven years ago we surveyed the Esri customers and we tried to understand it tried to understand if we could categorize what they were doing with a product. And what fell out of that was there were uh, five key uses of GIS. So going from left to right, people would use GIS to collect and organize and manage their data. So, so no surprises there, but what would they then do with it? Well, pretty much all of them would want to plan and analyze with that data, push that data out into the field, get information back from the field in their headquarters and operations center to get a sense of operational awareness, what was going on, and perhaps they'd want to engage the public, you know, public comments. So we're putting in a new shopping mall here. What does the public think about that? Do they have any concerns with that? So this is why we've moved to ArcGIS as a platform, so we can engage those many different types of users, be those C-level executives, with an iPad looking at a dashboard, knowledge workers, people working anywhere or integrating with enterprise applications like Microsoft, the Microsoft Stack or SAP. And we use WebGIS either on-premises with servers or in the cloud with ArcGIS Online to facilitate the sharing of that information. So we have the advanced tools for you, we've had those for years, but now we have the capability to share it out. And this is why Esri's moved, moving to identity-based licensing because we're all touching these different devices every day. So finishing up here, Arches has been transformed. We're using feeds from many different sources. We're integrating with base maps and with WebGIS we're pushing the result sets out to the people that need it to make decisions. So if we've talked about maps at work, let's think about where we work. So do you remember these days we had a you know, traditional organizational hierarchy. You know, perhaps GIS started off here in the engineering department. Now the velocity of information transcends all those departments. Uh, business is moving much faster. Uh, the way people consume information is much, much faster. So we need a way, an efficient, effective way of sharing it. So making the map once with the authoritative data and pushing it out to multiple sources. This is why we've extended the ArcGIS information model We've had GeoDatabase, the GeoDatabase for years, but now the focus is on information products using the web map to get those out to the users who need them. So we're supporting everyone here with a common enterprise platform, and now after integration, we have one version of the truth, everyone working off the same map. So really, uh, in conclusion, GIS is changing how we think and act. We've been you know, we've been on the left here for, for years, really, designing and planning and preparing, but now we're moving over to the right, doing predictive analysis, more decisions but making around the maps, and measuring those in real time, and changing and adjusting as necessary. So, uh, my, my sort of final slides really are, apply location in whatever industry you're, you're in, and above all, innovate. So with that, I'll hand over to Carmel, who will start off our demonstrations today with ArcGIS Pro. Thank you. Hello.